So, I'd like to start off <coughs> this speech with um, a story. So this is my fourth ever varsity football game that I was playing in my sophomore year. So as you can see, I have my knee pads pulled down, but um, which could actually attribute to my injury, but that's besides the point. Swag becomes before any type of injury. So um, <laughs> I would say, so I was coming in my first play of the game and someone rolls over my knee. So I limp off the field and someone tells me that I need to go get checked out by the trainers. So I sit on the, so I sit on the ledge and they stretch out my knee a little bit. And once they stretch out my knee, he passed me on the, the trainer passed me on the back and tells me, you're okay, so let me talk to your dad real quick. So he says something to my dad and I could see his face, I can see his smile just completely diminish. And I was like, w what, did, what did he say to my dad? So I go and crutch over to my dad and I was like, yo, dad, what did he say to me? And he said, he said you tore your meniscus. I tore my meniscus? What do you mean I tore my meniscus? He said I was okay. So I go back and this is, at this point, I'm completely destroyed. I knew I was gonna have to be out for a long amount of time to get my physical health in the right space. But what wasn't said at that moment was my mental health and how this would affect my mental health. Now from every single athlete, from the Michael Phelpses to the high school swimmers, lives passion, determination, and perseverance. These things live inside of every single athlete, as I just said. And with all of these things, with, with this being said, mental health can really take a toll on each athlete, as they must perform at a high level. So why is it that athletes can't take days, weeks, or even a year off for them to get their mental health in the right space, the same way they would for a physical injury? Now, it's said over here that 33% of college athletes and 35% of pro athletes, per Athletes for Hope, have said that they have dealt with some sort of mental illness in their career. Now, to compare, 26% of Americans have reported that they have dealt with some sort of mental health problem. Let that sink in. This is a 9% increase, and why is this? Well, this can be attributed to the fact that athletes must perform at such a high level for such a long time. Okay. So how come if these athletes have, such much, have more of a higher level of mental health problems, why are they not getting help for these issues? So let's see. Here's an example for Simone Biles. Simone Biles performs at such a high level and is considered probably one of the best gymnasts of all time. As she performed during the 2020 uh, Summer Olympics, she was dealing with some sort of mental health issue that, we, that no, yet to this day nobody knows about, but quite frankly, does not matter. She was dealing with some sort of mental health problem, and she took this time off to get this problem in the correct space. So why is it that she received criticism for doing an action that everyone needs to take every once in a while? And she was, of course, not alone, as 58% of um, Olympic athletes reported dealing with some sort of mental health problem during the Olympics. So why is it that Simone Biles was heavily criticized for what she did if 58% dealt with some sort of mental health problem? Now, I cannot answer that question, but what can we as a society do better? That's what I'm gonna be delving into during this TED Talk. So, 58%, and to reiterate, 26% of Americans have reported dealing with some sort of mental health issue in their lives. That's such a high percentage, and athletes are performing at such a high level. So why is it that we as athletes feel as if we cannot go towards these problems? Now, here's a picture of me and my girlfriend Ava <laughs> watching our dog, um, Maggie off. I promise you we take good care of her. She, she looked a little bit in distress in this photo, but <laughs> I promise she was okay. As you can see, that's me in my knee brace. So as I said before, I was dealing with a physical injury, and obviously it's better now. My knee's much better. I'm play back to playing football. Still have to wear a brace, but I was dealing with a physical injury, but I've been no stranger to the mental aspects of being a, a sports player. You know, 
I've been diagnosed with anxiety and depression, and it's been hard to be an athlete dealing with these issues because I felt embarrassed having to tell my coaches that I needed to leave because I was having an anxiety attack. I felt embarrassed while all my teammates got hyped pregame and I had to sit there and be in my own thoughts because that's the way I am. I felt embarrassed having to deal with these issues and being perceived as weak. And why is it that I felt that I would be perceived as weak? Because that's been instilled in my brain since I was a child. Not by any of the grown-ups that I look up to, but by football coaches back at youth football. They told me not to cry. They told me to not be a wussy. They told me to be a man. This instills this thought process in athletes' brains that they can't get help for their issues, which was sadly shown by the cases of Katie, Katie Myers and Morgan, and Morgan Rogers. These were two NCAA athletes who tragically took their lives because they felt as if they could not get, get proper help for the issues that they were dealing with, which is incredibly sad. And we are not, I'm not alone myself. 32% of high school athletes have dealt with some form of mental health illnesses as per Ohio University. And to compare again, 26% of the population deals with these issues. So what can we do as a society? What can we do to help these things out? Well, first off, at the administration's level, we can have coaches and trainers deal with these things better and have them deal with these things by talking to mental health experts and getting themselves on the right track so that they can help deal with these athletes whenever they're in crisis. Because coaches came into this profession for one thing and one thing only, because they're trying to make these athletes have a better life. And they know that some of these athletes do not have the same opportunities that other people do. And since they deal with these issues, they want to help them out. So let's help them help us. And what can we do as teammates? Well, we can talk to our teammates about these issues. If any of these, um, if, if you know any of your teammates who have dealt with mental health problems, you can just think about it yourself. They don't really talk about it as much. So what can we do to help these things out? We can have little group conversations about said things and talk about these mental health problems that we have and things that we can relate to so that these different mental health problems can be expelled from our brains because we know that we need support in order to get these, in order to get these, um, in order to get these thoughts out of our brains. So what can you guys do as a crowd? Well, I know most of y'all are parents, teachers, coaches, fans of sports, so what can y'all do? Now at the youth level, first off, you don't have to pull a knife out in the middle of a youth football game because I've seen it happen before and it's not pretty because you're gonna get dragged away in cuffs. So first you can start off by not doing that. Second off, what you can do is not instill these harmful thoughts that can um, hurt people's brains as they're quickly developing as their children. Things like not to cry or to have no regard for people as a whole. That is something that you cannot instill in a child's brain because they're developing and they're looking up at you. They're looking up to you and looking up at you physically because, you know, they're shorter. But um, so <laughs> um, you can do that at the youth level. And at the high school level, what you can do is next time you're coming to your next high school event, shout words of encouragement to players. Don't demean them or bring them down because we can hear you guys in the stands, and I promise you, when we hear someone scream that we suck, usually it gets to our brains, especially because we have to worry about other things that some people don't have to worry about. Things like our Algebra 2 test that we just took. I see you, Mr. H. Because, <laughs> you know, that's some things that we have to worry about. So what can we do at the collegiate level or the professional level? If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. Because at the end of the day, athletes are people too. And they need support just like everyone else. So you can support them by shooting them a tweet, letting them know that they're all good. Letting them know that we'll be there for them. 
because although professional athletes get paid the big bucks to do it, they need support just like everybody else. So in conclusion, frankly, be nice to everyone, but especially your athletes. Make sure to shout them words of encouragement and make sure that we can get help. Because getting, not getting help for your mental issues can be one of the biggest causes of death in America. So, what can we do as a crowd? We can be nice to other people, we can be nice to other people, wor worry about what we say, and just, in conclusion, be better people at all. And be more open to mental health issues because it's a new concept. It's not a new concept whatsoever, but it's a new concept to the public because we're just now becoming more comfortable with talking about these things. So I wanted to push these boundaries today. I wanted to make some of y'all a little bit uncomfortable because, you know, it's okay to be uncomfortable sometimes. And we put ourselves in positions where we need to be a little bit uncomfortable and talk about uncomfortable topics so that we can make these things comfortable. I've always <laughs> wanted to say this actually, so. Thank y'all for coming to my TED Talk.